Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on k smallest prime fraction. And so in this one, you have an array containing one and prime numbers while all the integers of r are unique. And you're also given integer k. And for every i and j, we consider the fraction ri over rj. And you want to return the k smallest fraction. So return it as two integers. So like in this case, the smallest fraction is one fifth. The second smallest fraction is one third, and then it's two fifths. And the second one, there's only one, so just return this. And they're trying to get you to do it in better than O of n squared. So obviously in n squared, you can just like get every single fraction, like make an array of like, um, you can, you, can, you can make an array of all pairs, like all combinations that are possible and then sort and then the comparison can be like A over B and then you can just like sort it and then you can, um, you can, you can get like the k smallest. So that would be n squared, right? You're basically just getting every single combination um, and writing it down. But the kind of trick to doing it the better way is notice that like, like what's the smallest value possible? So the smallest value possible is always going to be like the smallest number and the biggest number, right? So in this case, it's like one fifth. And then from one fifth, basically we can just think about like, okay, from here, what are the next smallest values? Like, can we figure it out? So there's going to be one, it's always going to be one of two values, right? It's either like, let's just write this out. So I'll just have some numbers and kind of show you. So let's say we have, uh, let's get rid of this. This will make it easier. So let's say we have some array of some numbers. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's enough. Okay. So we're going to start off over here as like these two indices, right? This is always going to be the smallest. Um, but then the next smallest from one seventh will either be you make this smaller. So you go to one sixth or if it's not this, like, like think about like what, what, like what's the minimum I can decrease to make it like a smallest possible, right? I either decrease the, um, I either decrease the denominator as little as possible, which is just move it down one, or I increase the numerator as small as possible. So I would just increase this to two. So these are kind of like the two values that are like the, the candidate for the second smallest value. And you don't know which one's better, but you know that like it has to be one of these. And so given a value, now that we know that, like given just a value, like let's say we're like taking this value here, this three fifths, the next smallest value for three fifths has to be either three fourths, right? Cause we have to make it smaller. So to make it smaller, we either have to decrease the denominator or increase the numerator. So we're gonna decrease the denominator as little as possible to just move it down to the next one. So it's either gonna be three fourths or we increase the numerator as little as possible, which is just gonna be four fifths. And so that's kind of the idea. So it's like given one number, we can figure out what the next two smallest numbers are. And there's gonna be a couple things we can do. So also if you have two numbers that are right next to each other, there is gonna be no smaller number than like this, right? Because you can't, you can't make it any closer. Like these are gonna be the biggest because like you can't, if you increase this or the same and so on, you need I to be less than J. So basically you need these to be one apart you need these to at least be one apart and then you can check for two values. So that's kind of what we can do is we can just store. So like in this case, like let's say we wanted the five smallest values or something. What we could do here is we can actually just have a heap and the heap will hold our current values. And then um, we can just keep popping K times. So we'll start at one seventh. So we'll just store like one seventh in here. We're going to store the indices. I'll just show it like this. So we'll actually just store the indices of these. But yeah. So when we pop this one seventh, then the two numbers we can add are either one sixth or two sevenths. So if k is five, the first value will be this. Then we're going to add into our heap one sixth and two sevenths. And so which one of these is smaller? So one six is smaller. So we're gonna pop one six, that's gonna be our second smallest value. And then we're gonna add the two smallest values for one six. So for one six, it's either going to be one fifth or two sixth, which is one third. So this is like our heap now. 
Then what's the smallest value here? So it's going to be one fifth. So we're going to pop that down. One fifth. And then for one fifth, what are the two smaller values in one fifth? So it's either going to be one fourth or two fifths. Then we do it again. So what's the smallest value here? Um, I think it's one fourth. Yeah, so we're going to pop one fourth. And then for one fourth, the two smallest values are either one third or two fourths, which is one half. And so notice we already have one third in here. So we don't, we don't need to put it in again. So we're not going to put in the same value. So once our value is in a heap, we're not going to put it in again. So we'll have a visited set to take care of that. And then we'll put in one half. And then finally, we need one more. So the next one is two sevenths. So hopefully I popped the right ones, but essentially that's how it works. And then now that two seven is our fifth smallest value, we can just return that. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing. So we'll just have a heap. We'll start with one number and then we're going to pop our smallest number and get the two possibilities we can go to from that number. And that's going to be the idea. And we're not actually going to store the number. We will just store the indices, the left and right index of the number. And then we'll make a custom comparator that will just take those two values and I'll kind of show you how to do that. And yeah, it's going to be the easiest thing. So let's do that. So um, let's see. So we need to make a heap. So so we'll just store an array of two numbers of i and j, which will be the indices in the array. So let's get a couple things. Let's get uh, int a equals length of array. Let's get um, a heap. So priority q. Um, and it'll just be int array here. You can make like a tuple if you want to. Like So the thing is, if you want to store the actual fraction that you used to sort on, then you need to, it can't be like an int array. So then you need to make like an object or something probably. You need to just make a new class that's like tuple or whatever with, with your um, double for the fraction and the two indices. So this will be easier. So the, let's just say this is gonna be our heap. Um, and this is gonna be a new priority queue. And then we have to give it a custom sort function. So we'll say it's a, b. And so basically we're gonna get, um, what we need to do is get the fraction for a and the fraction for b. And you can't have a integer, like you can't just do like one fraction minus the other. You actually need a double compare, I believe in here. So double compare, and then we are gonna get the fraction for A, the fraction for B. So the fraction for A will be, you also need to cast it into a double. So if you do like this, and uh, this will give you an error because it'll say it's an integer. So we can say double, if, as long as we cast one into a double, then the other one's fine. So basically the first, um, the first fraction will be um, let's see, a, so it'll be aj, or ai over aj. And then the second fraction should be the same thing. So now we don't need to, uh, actually, no, we, we need to do this again. We need to cast into a double, I think. So we need to do this again, um, bi over bj. So this way we don't need to actually store the fraction. We can just calculate it here and then compare. Um, so actually this shouldn't be VI, so this should be like, yeah, this should be A0 over A1, B0, B1. Okay, there we go. So now what we need to do is we need to put our first number into the heap, so we can say heap add, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be an int array, and it will be um, zero and uh, A minus one, right? The, the smallest number you can make is the first number and the last number, and we can, um, We'll also have a visited, yeah, we'll have a visited array as well. So we make sure we don't go to the same number multiple times. So we can say visited is gonna be a Boolean array. And this will just be a new um, array. Yeah. And it'll be length A by A. So yeah, in Java, I think it's preferably just use arrays over like sets and things like that, especially sets. So not, not sets, but because you have to have two indices, you have to make like a tuple or a string or something. So it's better to just use an array here. Okay, so now we can just go through all our stuff. So we can just make like an infinite loop if we want, or we could say like while, while our heap exists or something. So we could say like, just in case we could say like, while well, heap is not empty. So what we are going to do is we're going to pop the two numbers and we don't, we, we never really need to use the value. Like we never use the value other than to compare. So we already have the compare here. So we don't need that anywhere else. So we're just going to say, uh, 
let's see, int array, like cur or something, keep um, pull. And then we're gonna subtract one from k, so we'll do k minus minus. And then if k equals zero, that means we've reached like the number we want. So we can say like if k equals zero, we'll just say, uh, we'll just say return her. Okay. So now we need to check, first of all, is i, so remember in this picture, i has to be less than j by two, otherwise you can't, so the two operations you can do is either go up by i or go down in j, and you can't do either of those if i and j are right next to each other. So we could say if i plus one is less than j, then we can do this. And then we have to check if both of these are visited. So it's either gonna be i plus one j or j minus one i. So we could say like if, not visited i plus one j then we'll add that to the heap and add it to our visited so visited i plus one j uh, equals true and add it to the heap so heap add um and then we'll make a new array here and this will be i plus one j um and then we have the other one which is i and j minus one so let's do that one uh, oh, right, it's not it's not i plus one j. So actually we can fix that. We can just say int i equals cur zero, just to make it easier, and j equals cur one. Now this should all be fine. Okay, and then, so yeah, so the other case is i j minus one. So those are the two numbers we can get. Then this is also visited now. We don't need to have a number in our heap multiple times. So this will just be i, j minus one, and then we can just return something as a default, like return new int array, we'll just return like the empty array or something, just to represent it didn't work, but it should always return something. Um, yeah, so I think this should be it, so let's try it. Okay. Okay, so I think the problem is our um, comparison function is actually incorrect. So first of all, we need to actually have this separate and then do this. So it needs to be like this. Like we need to actually convert one of the values before turning it into that. So that's one of the things. Um, and then what we need to do here is we're comparing the indices. We need the actual value. So this should be like this. R a zero, R a one, um, R b zero and our v1. So a little bit confusing, but yeah, essentially we just need to have the values and I think that should be fine now. Mm. Hmm. Okay, it is, yeah. I don't know what I was looking at. All right. Oh, it's because I have the print. Okay, there we go. So yeah, you can also um, like make a custom class with just the fractions if this is a little bit confusing, calculating this thing on the fly. Um, but basically what's going on here, just a quick thing. So if you do three over five and you say like a double is equal to this, this will give you an error. So like double, double X, I think I'm pretty sure this gives you an error. So essentially what you gotta do is you gotta convert one of these to a double. So you can say like, I'll convert this to a double. And then the rest of the equation, it like will be assumed to be a double. So that's basically what I'm doing here. Is I'm just saying, let's just give me the first value, convert into a double. If I if I take the whole thing and then convert into a double, like if I do this, then the problem is three over five will do an integer divide, so it will just give you zero, which isn't what you want. So you want to convert like the numerator or the denominator or something first, um, and then it works correctly. So that's that's the problem there. Okay. So uh, yeah. So the runtime here is going to be, um, so basically it depends on K here, right? So essentially you do this K times. So K times you're gonna pop one value and push two. So it's gonna be like K log. And then the log depends on the size of the heap. So I think worst case, the heap can get to like N squared probably or around there. I don't think it's ever gonna be like truly N squared, but it'll be something like that. But regardless, like 
log log n squared is pretty small, so it's fine. So we basically got it down from n squared to k log n squared. Now k can be up to n squared. So um, if obviously like if k is like the biggest value possible, then it's not going to be good. But if k is lower, like like imagine our array is like a thousand or whatever it is here, and k is like ten, um, then it's way faster. Where for the brute force, you'd still have to get all pairs and then do a sort. So that would be like n squared log n squared or something, no matter no matter what k is. So this is better. Uh, and then space is going to be, so like I said, the heap can be worst case n squared. And this visited set can be worst case n squared. So so this is kind of a little bit of a mess. Like I said, um, you can you can make another variable, you can do it another way. But essentially, you're just doing a priority heap and you are comparing fraction values of your stuff to determine the sort order. Um, yeah, that's going to be all for this one. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.